Hi, this is Mike Moo from Hippo Watchdog. This video is going to tell you about the latest threat and malware, a variant of cryptoware that has been hitting HR, human resources departments, uh, across the world. It is called Petya. And this is one of the screens that you might see. I first read about this today, March 28th, about this new version that actually runs more efficiently and uses a different type of delivery system. It still sends something out via email. So the email will send out a little message saying that they're looking for a job at your company. And it would uh, have two attachments, one which is a supposed picture of the person and that is looking for a job. And then the second thing would be an executable file. Now, what is an executable file? Well, it's the type of file that you can you can uh, double click to run in order to run a program. Now, uh, the thing with this is that um, some of these are not some will be sent out in attachment format. And if you have antivirus or some sort of policy, it will strip those out completely. So instead, they send you a link to a Dropbox folder that links files instead. So in the Dropbox folder, there will often be two main things. One is the photo of the applicant, which is obviously fake. And then the other one would be the inexecutable file. So the example that I've been seeing being shown around the web because it was analyzed by Trend Labs and Trend Micro and other uh, anti-malware agencies worldwide, it looks kind of like this. And the assumption there in the message is that you then download these from Dropbox or any cloud services like Live Drive or anything, uh, Google Drive, for instance. And then they will, um, you'll download it. And the idea is you double click it in order to see the CV. So obviously, when you do that, it's not really a resume. And it would actually, once you load it, it will actually start overwriting something called the master boot record of your hard drive which will then cause your computer, a Windows computer, to crash. It is often known by people who've seen it before as the blue screen of death. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be blue, but that's traditionally what it has been. And um, it will display the screen. And then what will happen is, uh, of course, you, you want to reboot your computer because you think, well, this is all you can do. Or turn off the computer or press the reset button. When you do, by that time, it's already rewrote the master boot record that and uh, the master boot record already started writing a bunch of uh, uh, well once it boots up it'll it'll start um, disallowing the computer from booting in safe mode which is traditionally what a troubleshooter would try to do to fix the problem and uh, it would actually start putting some fake information on the screen so on bleepingcomputer.com this kind of shows you what starts happening is uh, it'll start saying that, well, look, it, we're we're starting to repair your computer. So your computer drive C, this looks pretty typical, right? Uh, it looks that way. But, uh, you know, what what is off about it for people that have known and what is what a check disk command does is it doesn't give you a warning like this. Do not turn off your PC. If you abort this process, you could destroy all of your data. Please ensure that your power cable is plugged in. It's not really repairing your computer or checking anything. In fact, right now it's doing encryption of your of your master file table. Now, what is the master file table? Well, if you think of your hard drive as storing all this data in a lot of bits, right? You got a lot of bits of information all over. How does the computer know what bits contain what and what bits go together with whatever and and how what what bits go to this file or this directory or or this set of files, etc. Well, it's all stored in something called the master file table. Now, if that is encrypted, that means you have a lot of stuff in here, but you don't know what it is, so you can't access it anyway. All right. So that's what it does. So that's why it works a lot faster. It actually, uh, depending on how much data is on your computer and has access to, it works a lot faster because it doesn't encrypt the data on your hard drive. Actually, it just it just encrypts your access to it. So you don't know what's what and it becomes very difficult to uh, try to recover everything fully. So if you become a victim of that, this is what it says, you've now become a victim of Petya ransomware. Your hard disk has been, uh, the hard disk of your computer has been encrypted, blah, blah, blah. Really, it just encrypted your um, master file table, of course, I just mentioned there, and it gives you specific instructions on what it is that you need 
to pay up, which is about roughly three four hundred dollars um, in Bitcoin equivalent, and uh, and and that that's the instructions that you need to go ahead and decrypt it. So, a uh, couple things that you probably want to make sure you do is one, make sure you have a full backup of your computer system. Uh, two, this is uh, this this works a lot faster, right? Um, the moment you get infected after you reboot, you start up, it's already starting to encrypt it. So, uh, you know, if, if you've seen something like this, you've gotten hit with it and you got the blue screen of death rebooting directly from that computer system is about the worst thing that you could do. All right. It's better to then get a professional, get your it team to go ahead and just go ahead, remove that from your computer system rather than have it start encrypting your data. Because once it starts encrypting your data, uh, then it's already done its damage. Right, then the restoration recovery process becomes a bit longer. So this is pretty nasty, but it's not as nasty as the other stuff that encrypts all your files. Why is that the case? Because this one actually, uh, for one thing, it's targeted uh, to HR people um, that are looking to uh, hire uh, individuals right? that might download it and use it. Uh, second thing is that it doesn't actually take your credentials it actually just uses the credentials that you have right now for your own computer system, but it doesn't actually go through and distribute itself some more on the rest of the network um, through credential through your current credentials, at least at this point in time. Okay, now this could morph again. They could they could do they could do the same thing uh, in a future version of Petya, that is a network version that will go through and encrypt all the master file tables of all the other computers that it could have access to. That's that's is definitely a possibility in the future. Um, don't think that it isn't. But right now, luckily, it it looks like it's it's individually targeted to that computer to which it was run, and it runs really quickly. And it's just a quick way to turn around and get cash uh, for these people. So, to protect yourself, obviously get the get the proper anti malware. Um, if you don't know if your antivirus solution is enough, I suggest you check out the rest of our channel on HIPAA Watchdog on YouTube. I have a video there called HIPAA Watchdog Internet Security Checkup. It'll give you a link to some free tools that you can go ahead and check to see if you uh, would not pass a security checkup. Okay, and you can you can try it out. It's a free web service uh, through a company called Zscaler and they will let you know if something does get through. So you can start from there. Uh, the other thing is obviously update all your antivirus, anti-malware. If you're using the free one, stop using it. Just purchase one, subscribe, and, and get that service. Uh, you definitely want to people that are actually there to uh, research this stuff and prevent these attacks from hitting your system. So you want to get rid of the free one, subscribe to a paid one, and obviously, if you're on a corporate network, you already have something like that. Just make sure it's it's up to date and it, and you're running a new version, a new engine, not something from three years ago that you're just getting antivirus subscriptions for. And then finally, probably one of the most important ones, because you can't actually possibly be able to protect yourself from all malware. Have that training. Do that training. It's part of HIPAA training. It's part of your, your HIPAA policies and procedures training. You train individuals to look out for stuff like this to help stop the spread, right? If your policy, and it's a good one, is don't download any EXE files, which are executable files or COM files, then that really helps uh, because it really cuts down on what these things can do. And if, if for whatever reason it gets through your firewall, because it's a new version and you haven't updated your firewall or your anti-protection stuff or your endpoint protections uh, because it's more of a manual process, then at least the user knows not to run it. Or if it looks suspicious, not to run it, not to download this stuff. Don't, don't mistakenly click the things. And if anything looks suspicious, have them report it right away so that you're safer rather than sorry. And obviously make sure that your backups are running properly. Uh, luckily this thing, only attacks your local drive and it only attacks your master file uh, table. So theoretically, if you have some important data, you can still recover data from it um, by taking that that uh, drive out and sticking it into a computer system and having an IT professional go in there and run some utilities and software, you can still recover your important data from it. So it's not as malicious, but it works a lot faster 
than the other one that encrypts all your files. So uh, make no mistake about it, this is still a malicious attack. It happens quicker and can do more damage faster, but, uh, but at least, at least it doesn't seem to infect the rest of your network. Um, right away. It's more of a uh, process that uh, allows them to get money faster from individuals uh, right away rather than try to bring down the whole network and ask for a larger ransom like the one that hit the Hollywood Hospital back in February uh, for 17,000 US dollars. All right, thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful to you and uh, you know definitely if, if you have your own account or, or you're in charge of this stuff with IT, uh, subscribe and we'll keep informing you about important things like this.